Hello team, welcome in. It is Okta, Okta Tuesday. A lot to cover. We're going to travel the world. We're going to talk about crypto, Bitcoin. Why 30 days? Actually, it's going to be a lot less than 30 days. It's a very important time frame and a ton more of information. So thank you all for coming. Uh, let's jump in. Crypto market cap, 1.53 trillion. It was like over 1.8 not too long ago. A lot of people are going through a very hard time. And I don't understand why, but that's just me. Anyway, crypto <laughs> is risky. It does move up and down, but we'll, we'll dig into all that too. And I'll show you a little bit of a ray of sunshine as well. Bitcoin right now is 39,400. Bitcoin dominance, dominance just under 50%. Ethereum 2200. And we know there was a big sale of it. So that went from 2650 to 2200 in no time. And uh, fear and greed is that back at 50. That tanked hard. But let's go. And now this is investment advice. Don't forget to subscribe. Best unique perspective and the broadest perspective you need to be a good investor in the world is right here. We'll start with the good news today. Uh, now, first of all, let's look at exactly what's going on compared to 13 weeks ago. All right, Bitcoin market, or crypto market cap is about 1.6 trillion versus 1.3 13 weeks ago. So we're up. Users 6.3 versus 5.6. Users up. Transactions 50 million versus 40 million. Transactions up. Crypto is alive and well. You'd swear it's dead <laughs> when, you, when you gauge the uh, sentiment out there. It's really, really negative. Anyway, let's look at exactly what happened over the last seven days since we showed this chart. You can see Bitcoin compared to everything else. Obviously, Bitcoin compared to Bitcoin is flat. But you see Sol is down 6%. Ethereum down 5.5%. Avalanche down 12%. Near Optimism, say Arbitrum, even worse. It's been ugly. When we look at it in dollar terms, Red across the board, and Bitcoin down 8%, ETH down 13%. It's just nasty, nasty week. And this is why people are upset. There was a little green patch there called Tau, but that's it. <laughs> and this makes people very sad. But uh, there is a little bit of a silver lining to all of this, and we'll talk about that too. We're now only 85 days away from the Bitcoin halving, which is very, very short window of time. Uh, in addition, uh, we did have that 20% haircut in Bitcoin in just 17 days. Now everybody thinks, well, the ETF is here and Bitcoin went down. So it's a complete failure. And everybody who hates crypto and Bitcoin is dancing on the grave. Weird time. <laughs> but if you are in this space, a 20% dip in a bull market is actually a short dip. 30% is the norm. And we're only at 20%. So let's dig in. What's causing this? Uh, first of all, let's look at the ETF because this is the culprit here. ETF update day seven. You can see uh, this spreadsheet I shared earlier on Patreon. But you can see all of the different fund flows across all of the different assets across every single day over the last seven days. I update this every single day. It'll be updated again tomorrow and I'll share it as well. But the key thing to look for is you can see a couple of things that fall out of this. One, Fidelity is beating BlackRock in terms of growth, which is good. It's really the two players you have to focus on is basically Fidelity and BlackRock. The rest, they do add up to something. But really, that'll give you a good sentiment as to what's happening. Now, the problem is down the bottom, the green line. That's the negative flow. And that's all grayscale. That is the issue. Another perspective of this is as follows. This is aggregated data over the seven days. And you can see all the fund flow into Fidelity. Now, the blue is the seven-day dollar value total. So Fidelity has $1.54 in it. BlackRock, 1.615 billion, et cetera, et cetera. And the red number is the amount of Bitcoin held by these funds right now. Those two, BlackRock and Fidelity, both have 40,000 already. Pretty quick. Hmm. But why is Bitcoin going down? And the answer is there is a FTX selling over a billion dollars worth of GBTC, as well as other people with retirement accounts swapping out of their GBTC. Now, there are days when the total demand for Bitcoin exceeds the dumpage by a grayscale when they send their coins to Coinbase. But there are also days uh, where it, it is overwhelmed. 
and we just went through two of those days where a huge amount of dumpage. You can see that on the previous slide. You see that the green line is going down and it's accelerating on day six and day seven. So that's the problem, ladies and gentlemen. Now, the good news is the net flow is not negative. 27,918 Bitcoin have been sucked from the system over seven days by these funds. The first few days was a lot higher, but then the dumpage from Grayscale accelerated and has gone down a little bit. We track it all very carefully, but that's still positive. And I'll break that down in more detail. Where are we right now? So the question is, how long more will this Grayscale shellacking continue? FTX was a massive, massive amount of dumpage, far more than retirement accounts were dumping. The question is, do they have any left? The answer is no, they're pretty much done. But if you look at this chart here from Glassnode, it shows you uh, before the ETF launched, there was about 619,000 Bitcoin by my calculations. Now there's about between 565 and 570,000. So 50,000 plus or minus 55,000 have been pulled out of grayscale in seven days. That's quick. So I broke it down. What exactly does that mean? And why is this video called 30 days? Well, we look at numbers here. So apologies for this. So the net Bitcoin absorbed, despite the dumpage of Grayscale, is 27,918 just into the ETFs. That does not include all the people like Piper's son, who is just buying Bitcoin right now. Okay. That doesn't include everybody around the world, everybody in other countries, other asset managers and funds. This is just those ETFs. Okay. And that's, that's a lot. So if you calculate that, the amount of absorption per day, basically seven days is 4,000. You look at the number of Bitcoin produced per day is 900. They are sucking up 4.4 days per day of supply. So the, the supply crunch is coming is only a matter of when. Now, the, after April, that'll go down to nearly nine days because the supply produced will only be 450. So the price will go up. So don't worry about that. Now, if you imagine GBTC is gone, that means the amount absorbed by these funds without the GBTC dumpage will be an awful lot higher. That could be 115,918 in seven days. That would be 102 days of supply in just seven days or after the having 204 days of supply absorbed in just seven days. And that's really what's telling here. And the reason this is called 30 days is because if everybody continued dumping at this exact rate, which is impossible, it would take less than 30 days for the total amount of Bitcoin that Grayscale has to go to zero. It's not going to go to zero. The FTX estates liquidation uh, had a huge amount of outflow over a billion dollars. And that was about a one third of all the outflows. FTX is done selling. That was the last day today. So we'll get back to normal tomorrow. And that means this little green line you're looking at here will start peaking up again. It will still be net dumpage, but it'll be nowhere near the scale it has been. And the other guys like the Fidelities continue to accelerate BlackRock too, as people le learn more. And now they see the Bitcoins on sale. So this stuff is even cheaper. So that's the 30 day math for people are freaking out, thinking it's the end of the world. It was just a perfect storm of crappy, very expensive fees from Grayscale, 150 basis points combined with the blind side of FTX dumping billions. Okay. All in very few number of days. Okay. So hopefully that'll give some calm to some people out there. Now let's look at some other news as well. More on chain stuff here. You can see here, this is a dormancy, simple moving average of 30 days from Glassnode. And basically what this means is somebody broke an old piggy bank and distributed its contents. So, Bitcoin that had been dormant for a long time, broken open, and it was likely sent to an OTC desk to sell to one of the Fidelities or ETFs or BlackRock, whatever else. And the average dormancy of Bitcoin reached a five-year high just two days ago, which is also pretty stunning. So you see things here happening. People have held Bitcoin for a long time, and all of a sudden they are cracking open their kitty banks and deploying elsewhere. Maybe they see other assets that look more compelling, 
but you know there's tons and tons of wallets so don't let this alarm you it's just one case and the amount wasn't that much as well going forward switching gears to crypto and you can see but despite the overall red weakness in the market it's still altcoin season and we went from 60 76 last week to 78 this week and that is extremely bullish how is that even possible well if you look at the performance the little black piece there over the last 90 days bitcoin is still up 10.6 percent over the last 90 days that is a huge return in traditional markets to make in three months even in a year for many assets and it still is up so every you know zoom out if you're in doubt but this is the performance of some of the other top names too Ordi and Say were the big winners, but pretty much everything else smashed Bitcoin, with the exception of Matic, Doge, Sheeb, Bitcoin Cash, XRP, XMR, Litecoin, XLM. The XLMs and the <laughs> XRPs have really bad tokenomics, by the way. So it's normal for them to be down there. Anyway, let's look at another view from our crypto compendium. This is the top 50 altcoins over the, th the top it's the last seven days and at the bottom it's the last 30 days i have never seen a chart in all the time since we've had this crypto compendium where every single asset was down in a week in the top 50. that's stunning and it's very telling and it shows it's been a rough week and that explains a lot of the sentiment as well you can see one of the big flies there say is down the most over the last week uh, avalanche is down the most over the last 30 days and say is up the most over the last 30 days so that's how things typically work things go up very high and then they mean revert over time that's normal let's look at the stock market and then we've got to get into some bad news too stock market has been bonkers over the last seven days doing really well with the exception of tesla down 4.8 percent but earnings are coming out tomorrow and that'll be exciting expectations are uh, mixed kind of low but if they can surprise with their battery storage business it could be very positive but the real message will be when elon musk talks to the market after hours with some details that we don't know what they are but they're probably going to be very exciting otherwise he wouldn't do it uh, but you can see apple rebounded nicely up six percent nvidia up another six percent after a crazy week the week before um microsoft two percent etc so Stock market breaking new time highs, S and P five hundred at another new t new all time high today as well. So what's going on? Crypto is going down, stock market is going up. Well, that's what we like. We don't want things to move together. We like that lack of correlation as well. Another good Bitcoin news as well. Bitcoin mining became more sustainable than any other industry on the planet. Shout out to Daniel Batten. You can see here the news is getting out that Bitcoin hits new sustainable energy high of 54.5% renewables, the highest of any industry on the planet. So again, another piece of FUD bites the dust, which we like. Um, and the reason Bitcoin, in case you're not aware, uses renewables is because renewables are cheap and to make money mining bitcoin you need very cheap electricity so that hopefully explains that in addition good news for the miners the bitcoin difficulty adjustment fell down 3.9 percent over the last few days which is good for them it's been on a rampage for the last 500 days literally the chart looks like that so it's good it's taking a bit of a breather and in addition bitcoin miners are making a ton of money off fees the fees as a percentage of block rewards are now 30.5%, which is great. And a big thank you to the ordinals as well. And I think they're coming out with new cats and punks and all sorts of things on Bitcoin too. All the maxis must be doing face palms like crazy. Anyway, um, another kind of interesting news. Japan will be short 11 million workers by the year 2040. Not only Japan, there are many countries around the world today that are already short factory workers and workers in general. And those countries include Germany, uh, the Netherlands, the United Kingdom, and many parts in the United States. There simply is no labor to do work. And why do you think Tesla is doing three shifts building these robots? It's because this will be the biggest opportunity we've ever seen. We've already seen a car driving with no intervention from San Francisco all the way to San Jose. Shout out to Omar for that. It's here. FSD 12 is rolling out to customers as we speak. And that is a game changer. But of course, the market doesn't react. Stock is still down. But again, slowly then suddenly is what I expect will happen. Just not sure when. But it is 
still very exciting. Now, uh, speaking of modeling, Cern Basher is a top-notch analyst. He would be on the channel on Friday, February 2nd, and him and I are going to model Tesla. And he has done extensive modeling in this area. He's extremely bullish. I have done that as well with others, and uh, that'll be an exciting video. So for the Tesla fans out there, stay tuned for the 2nd of Feb. Now, uh, another interesting chart as well, uh, and it just shows you how things can really move in an exponential manner. This is Costco grocery store versus gold over the last 37 years. And I like patterns and numbers. Gold over 37 years is up 375%. Your dollar in your pocket has lost way more than 70% of purchasing power in that time frame. So that return is actually a lot less. But when you compare that to a stock of a grocery store like Costco, it's up 46,718% in the same time frame. So the question is, what would you prefer to hold on to? And this is the other question as well. Getting in early, getting in hard to not even disruptive technologies. It could be a grocery store, can be life changing. All right. So when you're in a winner, try hold on to that winner. That's kind of the little lesson of today. And even something like a, a stodgy grocery store that sells frozen vegetables and whatever else they sell, um, it can be quite impressive. In fact, apparently their wine is very good there too. But this isn't a wine <laughs> episode. Speaking of money, money makes all boats rise, including risk assets. M2 is smoking hot around the world. This is a chart. Shout out to Sanjay as well for sharing. M2 money supply of the Fed, European Central Bank, People's Bank of China, and the Bank of Japan. All rising fast. We had a bleak 2023 where the purse strings are tightened for the central banks, but now they're unleashing, and that is only going to accelerate in 2024. It's one of my 2024 predict predictions. We'll have a lot more M2, a lot more liquidity, and that will raise all boats, okay? So for those who think the world is ending, certainly is not, barring any unforeseen circumstances too. In fact, uh, China is also overdue for a move. This is the China Technology ETF compared to the S&P technology ETF, XLK versus CQQQ, you can see that over the last 10 years, China is down 11%, whereas the US market's up 510% technology. What's happening? Well, I do believe that's about to change in a big way. And in addition, liquidity leads. This is just US liquidity even though it's concentrated within the top large U.S. banks, the amount of cash as a percentage of assets is huge. Small banks are getting smashed still, as they have been all last year, but at least there's more money now in the big banks, and that's probably part of the whole master plan as well for the future. And another view as to more money in the system, the China money printer is on big time, adding nearly a trillion dollars since August of last year. So that's like five or six months, nearly a trillion dollars into the system, which will float all boats, as we say. And another view of the world, this is the Chinese CSI versus the S&P 500. You can see it has done really poorly over the last year or two years, whereas the S&P has done very well. But again, that's also about to change. And as we shared a few days ago, uh, the GDP of China has just eclipsed that of the EU as well. So China is coming back. They still have some problems and there's some problems going on in the world as well, but they are pumping tons of money into the system. So now may be the time to look at some Chinese stocks as well. Speaking of Indian stocks and Chinese stocks, India just overtook Hong Kong Stock Exchange as the fourth largest stock market in the world. And I've been saying India is this huge, huge economy, huge middle class, very smart, very hardworking people. It's taking over. Also, they are massive adopters of crypto as well. It's the highest concentration, highest penetration of crypto in the world is actually in India today as well. So shout out to everyone in India as well. Now, a little bit more macro stuff, a lot of macro stuff today because crypto is kind of flat and boring. But trueflation, uh, say that U.S. inflation is now 1.82%. That's under the magical 2% that the Fed always talks about. And the United Kingdom is down to 
8% under 3% after they having a horrible time in 2023 with inflation. It's good to see it's coming back down to earth. And a lot of this is driven by uh, goods and food and rent as well for the people in the UK. Now, speaking of inflation, the Fed needs inflation to come down to cut rates. And now there's an 84% bet that at least a 25% basis point cut will happen by May 2024. Some people believe it could be earlier, but again, 84% is pretty good odds of at least a 25 basis point cut and a 30% chance of a 50 basis point cut. There's also about a 40 to 45% chance of a 25% basis cut in March as well. So watch the space. Once that happens, it will ignite the risk assets out there in the stock markets too. And in addition, another piece of good news, sentiment is up. Sentiment went up by the biggest amount since 2005. You can see the biggest monthly increase since December 2005, and now it's positive. Uh, I remember sharing this chart and it fell down to 50 a couple of months ago. And I was like, well, when sentiment's bad, that's really bad. But now it's getting positive again. So people are definitely more positive, looking forward to the elections and all sorts. So that also bodes well for the markets. <laughs> Don't forget, if you want a recap of everything, podcast version and a written uh, summary of every video we do, it's 10 or it's probably 10 cents a day because I write a lot of them myself too. Big thank you to the team. Now, bad news. We do have some bad news. Bitcoin monthly returns so far down 7%. That's not a nasty start to the year. If you look at the history of January's, typically we've had one, two, three, four, five red ones over the last 14 years. So it can turn around. And I do believe, well, we only have a week left, but it's possible Bitcoin could easily add 7% before the end of the month turning that positive. But either way, it's not cataclysmic at all. Uh, fear and greed, as I showed you, it is down to 50, which is not good as well. And grayscale discounts today down to 0.25%, still not at parity to the assets under management, but getting real close. ETH has remained around 15% now for a while. It did hit 11% at one stage, and that was a time to flop out, but now it's gone back up. And this bodes poorly for the chance that an ETH ETF would be approved. Otherwise, this would be heading to zero as well. So watch that carefully. Now let's look at money flow. We had the world record-breaking money flow last week. And this week, slightly negative. We saw minor outflows totaling $21 million, uh, which is unusual because uh, there was still a positive inflow into U.S. funds last week. Um, but there is, of course, the GBTC drainage. So... Depending on what time frame they calculate, that can explain that little negative amount there. I expect next week to be positive again. And flows by asset, everything down with the exception of short Bitcoin fund up 12.7 million. A lot of people are loading up on shorts to make sure they protect from any downside of the whole so-called sell the news event for Bitcoin with the ETFs. In addition, JP Morgan, we know they do not like Bitcoin, but they also probably do not like Coinbase. Uh, JP Morgan downgrades Coinbase, citing disappointing Bitcoin ETF launch. Obviously, the analysts at JP Morgan don't know how to look at numbers. <laughs> and they hate Bitcoin. And now they don't like Coinbase. Now, granted, Coinbase... I do believe will get hit because it is now cheaper for people to buy spot ETF at zero fees or 20 basis points than buy it on Coinbase. So that could impact some of their business. But at the same time, they have all the other altcoins and everything to sell. And they're getting money from the OTC support they're giving as well and custody as well. But if we look at the Coinbase chart on the ATR, what's interesting that I found uncanny is the price target for JP Morgan is 80 bucks, which also corresponds to what I call level one on the ATR. So maybe, hopefully they're not, but maybe they are using these tools as well. And you can see that uh, Coinbase was clearly rejected off level three. But if we did see Coinbase under 100 bucks, that might be worth a nibble, but I don't think it's going to get that low. Anyway, moving on. Uh, there is some other risk out there in the world. This was an interesting study from Bloomberg. And they talk about how the global risk of a Taiwanese war would have far bigger impact on global GDP than the C-19 pandemic or the global financial crisis of 2009. That would be bad. I still remain positive that 
at least for 2024, 2025, China is going to focus on building their economy, rebuilding their stock market, pumping money into the system. And the last thing they can take on is a war right now. So I think we're good for a couple of years. Um, and in addition, back to correlations, you can see the Bitcoin NASDAQ correlation here over the last 90 days. The QQQ is up 11.5% and Bitcoin is still up 44.13% over the last 90 days. So again, it's up a lot. The last 30 days, it's still even up a little bit. So things are still wonderful out there. So I just want people to have that same perspective. Um, another piece of bad news though, is as a crazy inflation driver, this will be a big driver of inflation. Again, the Fed do not control this. But global shipping prices are continuing to rise as the Houthi rebels keep up attacks and cargo vessels in and around the Red Sea, and the disruptions are driving prices through the roof. The average cost now for a 40-foot shipping container just went up nearly 25% in a week to nearly $4,000 a container, and that's more than doubling in the past month. So this makes everything more expensive, whether you're buying furniture or clothes or whatever else. And apparently also, rumor has it, there's a lot of fashion that's on ships and fashion needs to hit the market at certain times. And the delays will mean the fashion will be late. So by the time it gets to the stores, it'll be out of fashion or out of season or whatever it is. And uh, you might get some good sales and clothes as well. So everything is being disrupted. And this will increase inflation again. We don't know how bad just yet, but probably significant. And now a little bit of ugly news. Not that much ugly news. Big unlocks this week, uh, just four ones to call out. DYDX, Optimism, Yield Girl Games, and ACA, all having big unlocks coming up as well. That's it, I think, for the day. Thank you as well for coming, and a shout out to everyone on Patreon. Uh, this is from Godspeed. I've been watching you daily for two years and just joined Patreon. Huge Bitcoin and Solana fan. Let's make some money. Okay, good. Well, I think I think 2024 will be good. 2023 was bonkers good. But we'll we'll, we'll keep finding ways to find good alpha for you. So, Gospy, thank you for joining the community as well. And a big thank you to everybody that helps do everything here. And thank you to the mods in the chat too. And I will be back if I can knock out the next video in the next hour or so. Um, no promises but it depends on the prices of stuff because I'm doing that 12 days and I always like to deliver. So I should be back. Sorry for those in Europe where it's very, very late, but I'll see you all tomorrow. And thank you, everybody. Hit the like on the way out. Appreciate you all. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.